Hi, Rich Caruba for BowlingBall.com. I want to talk to you 170 average bowlers or less um, about give you some tips on picking up the 10 pin spare. You know, the 10 pin spare is tricky if you're a right handed bowler. Uh, now, of course, you can think the opposite way if you're a left handed player for the 7 pin, of course. What we like you to do is use the instep of your sliding bowling shoe and stand on the 35 board back on the approach. Uh, so if the center guide dot is 20, it's 15 boards to the left of it. What I like to see you do is kind of maneuver your toes so it's kind of pointing toward, uh, slightly toward the 10 pin spare itself. So the front part of your uh, right bowling hip and the front part of your bowling shoulder faces the 10 pin. Again, opposite for your left handed players. But you want to walk a straight line path to the foul line. If your normal walk is a straight line path, just because you maneuver and, and maybe open your shoulder slightly to make it easy for your hand to follow through toward a sighting target and hit the 10 pin, uh, you want to make sure that you don't drift toward the center of the approach. Number one reason bowlers miss the 10 pin, they drift back toward the center of the approach after they adjust cross lane. And you cut your effective angle off at the spare. The lane's not very wide to begin with and when you slide toward the middle of the lane you've only got maybe 20 inches of room to work with uh, from where you lay the ball down on the floor uh, on, the, on the lane bed when it comes off your hand and, and, and part of that portion of the 20 inches width of the lane or whatever it happens to be has oil and part is dry. So your ball could hook away quickly or it could fall off in the gutter if you have uh, the wrong angle. So uh, don't cut your angle off, walk your lines to the foul line. If you stand on 35 board, try to slide on 35 board. Influencing your hip and the front part of your bowling shoulder and hip toward the pin doesn't prohibit you from walking a straight line. You can still walk a straight line and you can practice that at home in the hallway of your house. You can kind of tur uh, turn the, um, your bowling shoulder maybe an inch or so behind your opposite or non-bowling shoulder and your hip will follow. They'll work together in unison, the hip and the shoulder, and you can still walk your lines. Okay. Uh, if you practice that, you'll be more accurate with your footwork, and accuracy in bowling comes from good footwork, making sure you arrive at the board at the foul line that you predetermined. You want to pick your sighting target probably between the third and fourth arrow at the 17 or 18 board, uh, and if you roll a delivery, we recommend using a plastic ball so it doesn't hook very much. Something that won't hook is going to be easier to control for the corner pin spares. Um, something that hooks a lot is going to grab the lane too soon and hook unpredictably, so your percentage of converting the spare will, uh, will not be as good as a ball that holds its path down the lane. Okay, so uh, if you happen to ha deliver a good shot and it hits your target, your sighting target, 17, 18 board at the bowling arrows, about 16 or 17 feet down the lane, uh, and it falls off in the uh, channel, well then maybe you move through three boards or so to the right and set up on 32 board and try it again. Do this in practice session until you find the perfect place to stand and slide at the foul line, the perfect sighting target, deliver your ball, a ball that doesn't hook much with your normal delivery and your normal ball speed because when you start trying to throw the ball real firm or if you're not real adept at changing your release and your wrist positions and your hand positions holding the ball, then you're not going to be an effective shot maker. So try to make your normal strike ball delivery using a ball that doesn't hook much. This will help you improve your ability to make the corner pin spare. And as you develop, you get better and better, then maybe you can get a little more sophisticated, try to throw the ball at different speeds, change your hand positions, and so on. Uh, there's a lot of little tips uh, that work. You've got to find the one that works best for you, but that's how we suggest you start. I hope this helps.